Favors is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And that's especially true for this. This was a, um... Look at the condition of this case. I mean, it is absolutely pristine. This is a Targus case uh, for a smaller laptop. I think it's a Targus. Actually, it may not be, but it has the old Targus stripe on it. It is absolutely mint. Came with uh, some software manuals and not much else. Oh, wait, yes, there is something else. Why do you guys see this? Wow. We have here... Look at this condition! I mean, Jesus, it was like never used! Anyway. I paid $14.99 for this thing. That's including the case. I know, amazing, isn't it? And, uh, yeah. Look at the condition that this Epson is in. This is an Epson... Was it an action note? Um, look at this. This is, this is like a stone finish. I, I, I can't express how immaculate... Except for this right here. This is like a rub mark, and this may even come off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get that off. But let's take it out of the case before I open it up and show you the inside. It still has stone finish all around, even the port doors. It has the freaking port doors. My god. Two USB ports, a built-in modem. But that'll line out, which is curious. In the back here we have yet another port door, still intact. Printer, parallel, VGA out, serial in. Look at that. Look at the finish on this laptop. Power supply, floppy drive. You'll notice something missing. No PCM CIA slots at all. Not a single one. Let's set this down for a minute. Move the case out of the way. These are my clock weights. 1847. Cast in what looks like beach sand. Anyway. Um, so yeah, back to this. Let's open it up. Oh, I'll show you the underside first. Careful. This, this is actually a very fragile finish. Very, very, very fragile. Alright. Here we go. Here are the specs. 4 meg of RAM, 80 meg hard drive, 2400 baud modem. The original label, pristine, absolutely mint. It was manufactured by ASE Technologies. Here's the warranty label, Epson on-site warranty service. I wonder who has that number today. I wonder if there's still that number's still active. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Hello, you've reached sex line. Thank you for calling Epson's Automated Support Services. Pour des renseignements en français, appuyez sur le 2. Epson's automated telephone support and fax advice are no longer available. For help, please visit our website at epson.com and select drivers and support. Epson's website includes frequently asked questions and troubleshooting help, as well as drivers and manuals. If you prefer to talk to a live agent, you can find the telephone number on our website Okay, so that number has been shut off, but it's still being paid for by Epson. Let's take a look at the battery. This is going to be the weak spot of this machine. Port door. Oh, is there a manufacturing date on this? 
No, not quite. Well, yeah, maybe. All right, here's the battery. The original battery, made in Taiwan. Um, made in 1994. Okay, so that's when it was made. One of the battery uh, terminals has eroded away. It must have a leak. Um, a, uh, yeah, it must be leaking acid. Um, the terminal is dissolved and broken free. I actually had to remove all the little bits of, um, of terminal that were left in there. Uh, it was a sad sight to see, I gotta tell you. Not something I was looking forward to. This pack could be rebuilt. Um, I may do just that. I mean, what the hell. Interesting thing about this laptop is I have never in my life have I ever seen in person an Epson laptop. Um, but from the looks of it, it was a Taiwanese OEM type machine uh, sold to Epson by the Taiwanese vendor. Um, it's not a very high quality machine. Uh, see, there's some wear marks here. This is where the coating has worn off and it's white underneath. So thank God. <laughs> thank God it hasn't worn off anywhere else. I'm going to take some flat black touch-up paint and actually touch that up. Or flat dark gray if I can find it. Let's get back to what we were doing here. So, let's take the Sabres label off. I'm, I'm making you guys wait for this. For the unveiling and actual final power-up of this laptop. I'm making you guys wait and wait and wait. I'll make this as tedious as humanly possible. Because I'm just that kind of guy. I want to get the Sabres label off before it becomes one with the plastic. Come on. You're doing well. Freaking Sabres. You know, I gotta say this. Um, this is unusual for Sabres. They kept the laptop and the case fully intact. They didn't try to sell the power supply separately for some insanely ungodly high amount of money. They didn't try to sell the case as a separate unit. They kept it all in one package, and I can't thank them enough for that. Where is that bugger anyway? Oh, here it is. Power supply. Power supply is a little uh, worse for the wear looking. It has some scratches and scuff marks, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> Ultimately, I'm all right with that. Um, but yeah, Savers is, uh, it's really, it depends on who puts the stuff out for the day, I guess, or who picks through it. And, um, you know, it's amazing how they, they don't even try sometimes to keep things together. They just sort of split things up. Ground pin is busted off. Oh my God, I better take it back. Actually, is that a standard plug? Yeah, and a standard PC power cord. Look at the size of that brick. All right. Let's plug in the power. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay. Now I gotta use, this is a two-handed operation. There we go. Okay, we got a flashing green light indicating power has been achieved. There we go. Ready? Whoa. Look at this thing. It is, oh, it is so clean and so perfect. I mean, I'm going to clean this up, but this is, I haven't done nothing to this laptop. I have not cleaned it. I have not used it. I have done nothing. I turned it on in the store, and that was it. Look at this keyboard. Have you seen anything cleaner? I mean, oh my god. It's like a new machine. And these are very fragile. This, this I, I got it just a side step for a second. This machine is, this is as good as it gets, guys, for vintage laptops. It doesn't get any better than this. Um, this was a very low-end machine for its time period. This was a very cheap laptop. This was nothing that... Uh, you know, somebody would buy as a performance laptop. This is when laptops were basically secondary machines. Um, 
They were companions to desktops. This would not have been somebody's primary machine. So let's look at that mechanical power switch. Uh oh. Try that again. Okay. Made a liar out of me. <laughs> this thing did run in the store. It ran fine. But sometimes it's spinning too, you can hear it. Well come on. Really? There it goes. Drive's failing. Okay. Perfect. Loud son of a bitch, isn't it? Um, take a look at the screen. This is a typical passive matrix color display. You can see how the characters form um, shadows and ghosting uh, vertically and horizontally in some cases. And it's looking to me like it is a single scan I don't see a, a division line in down the down the middle. There is no mouse. Uh, forgot to mention that. This is like the last of a breed, a last of the last of an era, if you will. Um, this is when laptops started to become. Um, they started to build them for the Windows world. This is before the Windows world. This design, basic design. It does not have an integrated pointing device of any kind. Um, if anything, it would have had a clip-on mouse that would have attached to the side here, um, but it doesn't have that. Typical for a passive matrix color screen, it actually has a brightness and contrast control. Here's your brightness, contrast. So that all works okay. I don't see any skipping or anything like that. The drive just went to sleep on me. And the drive's going to go. So I have another laptop drive I'm going to put in this. I'm going to try to uh, make an image of this drive. And uh, no, that'll be difficult because I have no way of getting a network connection to it. Damn it. I can't netboot it either. Well, I'll figure out a way. Um, I'm going to put another drive in it. I have one actually at home on my workbench. At home. I am home. Idiot! No. At work on my home bench. Okay, now I'm being retarded. I, I use that word improperly. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend anybody. I use the R word. Holy crap. Um, here we go. So let's uh, shut it down. Without a mouse, you can actually use Windows. You can just use the keyboard commands. It's really easy to do. Um, I believe the escape key would... No, I guess not. It's got the color... Look at this color scheme. This is something that I would have done. I love that. Hard drive keeps going to sleep. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what hard drive that sounds like. What brand. So let's see what we have for a processor. Um, let's see. Running DOS 6.20. Uh, let's see. What was the command? MSD. Oh, that's probably not going to pull up much. I'm going to do a surface scan on the drive, too. I'll run the scan disk. Okay, so we've got a 46SX. No network, MS DOS 6.2, no mouse. That's it. Really not much else to report. Four megabytes of RAM according to the um, machine label, and that's what it has installed. Now, here's a cl this label is a clock doubled 486. Now, from what I understand, that really means it is a DX2, but I could be wrong. Um, probably am. Let's plug a mouse into it. Oh, here's a donor. By the way, uh, if you guys are looking for updates on this compact, I still haven't decided what its future will be. <laughs> um, I'm not sure whether to turn it into a planter or a fish tank or what. 
or put a hard drive in it and not find a place to put it because I don't have a place to put it. Um, if somebody is in the Boston, New Hampshire, Southern New Hampshire area and wants it for free, they can come pick it up. I am not shipping it. Um, <clears throat> okay. Seriously, I, I just um, I have enough things going on right now. I've got that anti-clock torn apart. Here's the mechanism in all of its glory. Um, I don't need any more projects. And uh, I don't need to be looking for spots to put things anymore. I'm just tired of doing that. So um, We're going to plug this mouse in. This is a disgustingly dirty compact mouse, which, by the way, will be included with the compact Rosario if anybody wants it. Um, I, yeah, I can do better than that. I, I've got to actually, I've got a better mouse upstairs. Let's not use this one. It's absolutely hardly gross and disgusting and probably has a colony of God knows what growing on it. That's better. Here goes. I'm going to go into that BIOS here. I missed the delete key. Too late. Too late. All right, 46 SLC2, 50 megahertz. Got it. It's actually not a bad processor for the time. Yeah, these passive matrix displays were nasty to look at. Um, they were just very hard on the eyes. Um, it's looking for this Cal Smart program or Cas Smart program. I'm gonna I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. Let's take a look at uh, let's see. Let's arrange icons here. This is looking like the factory build. Um, I'm gonna try to aim my camera while I'm working here. Desktop. I wonder if it has like an Epson background on it. No. Arches, I like that one. Pattern. I usually do like no pattern. Starfield flying windows. Let's see what flying windows looks like on a color passive display On a 46 SLC 2 which is a mighty fine processor for that time period I'm so glad I found this. I, I wasn't going to go there today because I had other things to do and I, I just happened to be in the electronics section. There was a, a couple of guys that were um I guess they were looking for a sweet deal in a laptop, and when they realized what it was, and I don't think they knew what it was, they had no idea. They were like, oh, it doesn't have a DVD player, so let's throw it. And that's when I grabbed it from the... It was on the test shelf, powered up with a black screen. And um, I was concerned that there was a problem with it. But I think it was just the power management kicking in or something. Which, by the way, in those days... Back in those days, power management was not controlled by Windows, it was controlled by the BIOS. And these laptops usually had uh, shortcut keys that would bring up power management functions. Um, surprisingly, this one, which is, it, again, this is a low-end machine for that time period. It doesn't have such a thing. And it probably doesn't even turn the display off when you close it. Now the display is still going. Yeah, so this is this is um this is a very early laptop, obviously. It doesn't have really any power management whatsoever from what it looks like. I mean, in 1994 they had better technology than this. But uh this would have been a cheap one. So let's um VGA utilities. Let's see what that's all about. Set res, wind panel. Oh, that hard. I have a hard drive for a Mac uh, PowerBook 170 that does the same thing, <laughs> but it hasn't failed yet. Oh, here we go. We can reverse the. Um... Let's see what that does. 
Oh, that'll probably take effect if I restart. I'm going to just not do that. Let's see. Panel power. Panel low power usage. Turn that off. Uh, let's see. Black and white. Only shading display panel CRT symbol scan. CRT high refresh. This is a 640 by 480 resolution, just so you guys know. Um, back in those days, uh, the software was designed to run in 640 by 480, which is why you don't have icons that are the size of a school bus. Um, things were different back in those days. I, if, I, if I had to guess, I would say this laptop was purchased by somebody who simply didn't use it. You can tell by these keys that there's... You want to look at your enter key and your spacebar as a guide. And then those are the first keys that will start showing wear symptoms and and these don't have any wear at all. I mean, it's it's a mighty fine machine. Um, of course, I said that quite a lottery expert. Really? Let's see what that does. Yeah, this, this hard drive needs a surface scan. I'm going to do that on it. Lottery expert for Windows. It'll pick your lottery numbers for you. Out of memory. Oh, that didn't take much. Let's, um, I want to I wanna get in the BIOS real quick. I want to see what I can do for the power management. I'm just going to do a control delete instead of a, a cold boot. Let's see here. Dell, Dell, delete. There we go. Ah, here we go. It's an American Megatrends BIOS. I usually saw these on, like, the cheapest machines available. I think the better ones would use, um, power management. Here we go. Power management. We're going to just go ahead and turn that off. Page up, page down, disabled. Hard drive is, see, having a hard drive that's 20 some odd years old, or almost to it, that powers down every minute, it's going to die quicker. So we're going to turn off that. We're going to turn off all the power management. Just shut it off. It's not like I'm going to be using this thing in a board meeting. Although, I might do that as a joke. I'm going to bring this to work next Friday uh, when we have our meeting for November, and I'm going to use this. This is going to be my laptop. I'll say, well, you guys wouldn't buy me a new laptop when I asked for it, so I they did buy me a new laptop now, but it took a while. It took six years. Alright. So we already know what the processor speed is. And we know pretty much everything else about it. Um, I wanted to run a surface scan, check for bad sectors. Got a mouse connected. Yay. I hate passive displays. Oh yeah. I gotta fix that. CS money. So we're gonna fix that right now. Um, I'm trying to remember how to do this. Edit. Can I do this from the command line here? Edit. Uh, command, no. Win.ini. Will that do it? Yep. Here we go. Load C money C A S M A L R T dot X E. We'll just yank it out. Oh, wait. It didn't work that way. And you, you can highlight the mouse. You gotta clear and then you gotta do ah, there we go. Okay. You can also tell what kind of driver was installed for the printer. It had a Canon bubble jet installed at one time. All right, we're going to quit. Save. Yes. All right, sweet. So now when I load Windows, that shouldn't come up.
Bada bing. Okay. Now, see if we can figure out how long ago this machine was last used. The first thing I do is I look for any documents that the previous owner may have left on it. I know that goes against every grain of my moral fiber. The hell? That doesn't make sense. Anyway, um, yeah, this guy was into lottery stuff, like lottery software, for whatever reason, and MS Works is where the stuff would be. I don't see any documents here. Fortune. Yeah, this was like a, wow. Hm. Bitcom, Astro, newlife.exe. I want a new life. No, I like my life. I get to make videos and get paid for it. That's a nice thing to do. Expert Software was a company that made a lot of low-end software. A lot of their stuff was available at your local Walmart Supercenter. Um, it was cheap. This is like a tarot card program, I think, like Fortune Telling Matchmaker. Right? Name. Wait a minute. Okay, for a second there, I thought maybe this was like a professional fortune teller or wannabe professional uh, fortune teller's machine that they were using to predict people's lives and it had their entire contact or client list in it. That doesn't seem to be the case. I noticed one of the names was Johnny Carson. Timothy DaCosta, Tom Cruise, Madonna, Chicon. Yeah, these are all fake test names. Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, okay, never mind. So that's not really the case here. This determines, like, compatibility stuff with people and, and their, depending on their astrology signs and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's all it is. This is all software. I'm going to probably yank off of it. I don't see anything that goes back to Epson as being their factory image. That's what I was actually looking for. But I don't see anything that references Epson, like an Epson drivers folder. But then again, in those days, there really weren't many drivers that, you know, or third-party drivers. Um, there's no sound card, first of all. There's no factory pointing device. Um, there's no high-resolution graphics. This is a standard 640 by 40 SVGA, um, actually, I'm sorry, VGA uh, display adapter. Nothing special. All that stuff was built into Windows at the time. Um, basically, if it ran on DOS, it would run in Windows 3.1. You know? Um, so, let's see. Driver-wise, I'm referring to. Except for, uh, you know, sound cards, which were not really common back in those days, especially on laptops. Let's do a quick, um, let's do a quick scan disk on this machine. I, I just can't believe I found one in this condition. I've never found an Epson anything. And here I find an absolutely mint but with a possible failing hard drive action note. It's just too cool for me. I, I think that's great. Um, I wish it would take an overdrive chip or a DX4 because I've got one. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of lost data here, um, a lot of lost clusters. But that used to happen a lot on these old machines, so that isn't really a terrible thing. So, you know. But what really drives me nuts is that there aren't any shortcut keys for power management and stuff. I think that was really mainly for higher-end machines at the time, like the compact Contours and the Dells of the world. Um, like, no um, integrated power management hotkeys. While the high-capacity battery that I bought for $18 new in the package at Rich's camera has finally bit the dust. Well, I mean, it died for the first time, so I gotta recharge it. 
So I put my old battery pack in and I've got 94 minutes of recording time. This is a two hour battery. Got it for 18 bucks. Because Root's camera um, has unfortunately gone belly up. And they had one left in the entire store. So I bought it for $18. Did I mention it was $18? Retails for $65. <laughs> Here we go. Um, here we go. Yes, I want to do a surface scan. So that's going to take forever and a day, so I'm going to let it run. There are no previously recorded bad clusters. You can see a lot of fragmentation. Um, oh, this isn't going to take as long as I thought. That's right, it's an 80 meg hard drive. What am I thinking? Anyway. I hope my, um, I think I've got a, oh geez, probably a 500 meg or an 800 meg ready to go in. Something like that. So yeah. I hope that works. It'd be a shame if it didn't. Oh, before I forget, I've got to pop the, uh, the thing apart. There's a clock battery in this, and it is probably pissing acid everywhere. Um, I gotta, gotta replace that. Yeah. So. Alright. No, I'm gonna put the camera away now. Bing. Okay. I'll let you read that. Alright. Good. So, um, we're going to just uh, exit and run defrag. For those of you who are familiar with Windows defrag, I'm going to show you what it used to be like before it was bloated. Although it probably works better now. I, it doesn't matter to me um, at this point. Watch how fast this thing goes. Let's see. Full optimization. Okay. Begin! By the way, it found no bad clusters. Only good ones. There are no bad clusters. Only misunderstood clusters. Wait. Yeah. That does sound loud, though. I'm trying to think of what kind of hard drive that might be. I'm thinking it might be a Connor. More than likely a Connor. I wouldn't put money on it, though. Let me just let it do its thing, and, uh... Yeah. And in 3 minutes, 26 seconds, it was done. Yeah. Okay, there we go. You can clearly see the issue here with the passive matrix display. They sucked. And this is what they call a single scan passive matrix display. You notice there's no line down the center. That line that would go horizontally across the dead center of the screen was the dividing line. Each half was controlled by a separate um, controller and drawn independently. And the result of that was less of this uh, shadowy, ghosty stuff and um, a much crisper image that, um, what's the, what am I trying to say? Um, it would, it would, it would actually, the refresh would be much better. See, on a display like this, now this isn't too bad, but I've seen some that you could actually see like a rolling image going across, like scan lines on some really cheap ones. This one's not so bad, but it is not a dual scan. Um, or maybe it is. You know, I'm starting to wonder about that. Um, it looks too good to be a single. But I don't, I don't see at any point, I don't see a division line. So yeah, it's a single. It's a, so it's a cheap, cheap display. Another thing is, this is what black used to look like on LCD screens. This was black. 
you know, you really couldn't get anything better than that until the active matrix displays became affordable to the point where notebooks started having them. By the way, we were at full brightness, uh, so it's not the brightest bulb uh, in the tree. Um, so let's shut her down completely. Fire back up. <clears throat> It's running a little better. Maybe it's warming up. Let's see how this works. I really, really, really would like to image this drive and uh, copy it to my other notebook. I have an older notebook drive that I yanked out of a... I think it was an AST. or um, I made a video of it couple weeks ago, about a month ago, two months ago. So, let's see here. Obviously there's no sound driver, no sound card. Date and time. I'm going to set the date and time and we're going to see if it holds for any length of period of time. It is now 11.06. The current date is 10, uh, 26. 2012. Oh, right. Ha! Oh, man. I make myself laugh sometimes. Um, <laughs> this, by the way, is not Y2K compliant. Yeah. 11.06. I am so funny. Let's see how long it keeps that for. Um, all right. We look through the file manager, there's nothing cool, um, nothing unusually interesting. Let's see what version of Works it has. I have Works 4.0, it came out in 93. This is 3.0 from 93. Oh, wait, there was a registered owner there, wasn't there? Okay, it's trying to open a file here. Yeah, I'm going to have to reinstall this, I think. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Those are files that were loaded from a floppy disk. So whoever owned this was working almost exclusively off of floppy disk. Good stuff. anything different. So it's trying to load files that simply aren't there. Reasonable. Um, so yeah, I think we've pretty much worked the death of this machine. I mean, there's not much else I can show you. There's, there's nothing really worth showing. Um, what I want to see now is if the battery has taken a charge. You'd be surprised how long some of these old NICADs would actually run for. That doesn't surprise me at all. Okay, well, we know the battery's toast. Do for a rebuild. But then again, there is one terminal that's not connected at all. <coughs> but yeah, this is a budget machine through and through. Um, nothing really fancy or nice. Well, I guess that concludes this video. Um, you know, real quick, I'm going to try to clean some of this stuff off and see if it comes out. Okay, it looks like the marks in the front came out, so that's brilliant. Um, and, oh, let's see if I can show you better there. So just do a quick scan. There were some little marks on the lid. They're gone. So now we're going to pop the lid open. Of course, it's still running because it's, it doesn't have a, an interlock or anything that shuts it off because it's cheap. It's cheap, I tell you. 
Look at those flying windows. Oh my god. Uh, that mark that was on the side here is also gone. Um, I'm going to bring this to work in a meeting and see if anybody notices my, uh, what is this thing, like 19 years old? <laughs> 18 years old? Yeah. Uh, see if anybody notices my clock doubled 486 with Windows 3.1. Of course, I can't run it off the battery, sadly. Um, but look at how awful the display looks. These were truly bad times. Uh, Minesweeper Solitaire, that's all it's got. It's got nothing. Nothing, man. It's like bare bones. I wanted to see who that copy of Works was registered to. That'll give me a clue. <clears throat> registered to Timothy DaCosta. Stop it. Stop it. Timothy DaCosta. There was a business card inside the case. What did I do with it? Is it still in there? No, it's not in there. Jeffrey Eberlin. PCs complete. Located in Marlboro, Mass. Oh, wait. What's this? Nineteen ninety five unlimited eight ninety five BB shell dollar ninety nine email per cell. Okay. Hmm, interesting. Let's Google this place. Okay, I was wrong about the hard drive, but this is interesting. This is a Quantum Go drive. This is a um, same manufacturer that Apple uses on the on the uh, PowerBook, and the Quantum that I have in the PowerBook does the exact same thing this one does. Interesting. Another thing I found: this particular machine has the Dallas Real Time Clock unit. This is a real time clock and a battery all in one, so that won't leak and it won't destroy the machine. Unfortunately, unless it's socketed, it really can't be replaced very easily. The other thing is the battery contacts over here, which are, one of them is damaged, um, are going to be a bit of a bear to fix if I decide to do so. It does have, it appears to have the optional modem. That's this board here. So it does have the modem installed, um, which is something that I had I had found a catalog, not a catalog, but the original brochure for this thing, and, and uh, the modem was an option. It would have the connector whether the modem was installed or not. But this one's got it. Um, this is a socket for a 486 coprocessor. And, uh, of course, there isn't one. That was optional, too. It was manufactured in 1993. Uh, All right, let's see if I can get closer on that here. Manufactured in 93, uh, 25, 27, 9, 10. Um... Hmm. That's the month, I believe. So that would have been made in... Uh, it's hard to tell, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on, out on the limb here and say it was manufactured on October... In October... On October... Uh, 27th... 1993. And... What's really interesting, really interesting, is that today is October 26, 2012. Happy birthday. <laughs> wow. 
I could be misreading the uh, the date. I probably am. I don't know how you can display 12 months on a wheel like that. Nevertheless. <sighs> okay, I'm getting tired. So I can't replace the clock battery. Um, this is not, it may be socketed. Let's take a look here. Let's see if I can pry up on it. Um, there is a scientific way of removing these, but, oh, this one is socketed. I'll be an Unky's Muckle. Um, so here we go. You can actually buy these modules. Um, and there are ways to replace the batteries. You have to, it's, it's a bit of a project, but you've got to remove this cover or cut into it. Um, I'm going to see if I can find one of these. Here's one way to fix it. We're not going to do that. But yeah, there are many ways to replace the battery. Um, uh, I don't think I'm going to waste my time with that. Yeah. I had a PS2 Model 30 that had one of these in it. Yeah, those were the days. Looks like a lot of these hacks are actually bypassing the battery, not replacing it. Which is, um, not fun. And here's another version. And they just, they're just jumpering to it. They're not really, it doesn't look like they're even disconnecting the the internal battery, which, um, hmm. I don't know. I see if there's anything on eBay. Like a reproduction or aftermarket, uh, you know, kind of thing. Let's see what we got. Might find some used ones. Oh wow, I can get one for four dollars. <laughs> Eighteen dollars. Is it new or used? It doesn't really say. There's not really much of a description here. I'm going to say this is probably new. I'd rather spend four bucks on a new one uh, than waste money on a... Um, or waste my time trying to hack the old one. Yeah, it just doesn't seem too friendly. I wonder if the pinouts are the same. I would imagine so. But they're really cheap. It's incredible. Probably no good. Anyway, so yeah, there's that's one option. Of course. Um, thankfully, they didn't do a soldered on battery. Um, thank God for that. So. By the way, <clears throat> when I took the real-time clock unit out, put it back in, I did not uh, change the time when I booted the machine back up, and that's because the battery is built into the real-time clock, so you can remove the entire unit as one, and the clock will remain running um, whether it's in or out of the machine. So when I put it back in again, all the clock settings, everything system bio settings all stayed the same. I didn't have to reset them. That also means that the battery is still good. It means that the clock battery is still actually operational, which is incredible. It just doesn't happen. I can't explain it any other way. Um, hmm. I'm trying to do a control alt delete with one hand. Can't be done. I'm going to check my uh, power settings. Okay, let's see how those uh, 
fared. Bring our brightness up. Power management. It stayed the same, so I didn't lose anything. Um, custom settings. Let's try to get the screen brightened. We have our typical check disk drive. I'm going to enable that. Boot sequence AC, password disabled. CPU cache enabled. Okay, that's fine. Um, basic settings. Type 47 hard disk drive, 81 megabytes. I took another look at the machine and I was disappointed to find that um, the hard drive is a low profile type and the one that I've got to replace it with is not. Um, it won't fit, I'm, I'm fairly certain. Um, so yeah, oh, I can change the color scheme I think. No, maybe not. Yeah, F2, F3. Make it a little easier on the eyes. That's better. There we go. I did say Seiko Epson Corp. I wonder if that's who manufactured the machine. I mean, it was listed as an... I forgot what it said underneath. It was like SEC, I think. I don't remember. Well, let's see if the battery takes a charge. Now, I've cleaned up all the contacts, and I put the battery back in, and I added some tin foil to the broken contact. And uh, I'm going to see if that um, actually allows the battery to charge. I'm going to just leave it plugged in overnight and see what happens. I'm not really uh, optimistic, but... You never know, sometimes these batteries actually do come back. It's, it's, it's uh, kind of incredibly insane. So let's leave it on. All right. Here we are, next, uh, next day. And um, we're gonna try to power this thing up. I wanna see if the hard drive wakes up or if I have to um, pursue finding a replacement, which is gonna be difficult. Really, really, really difficult finding a replacement drive for this thing. Um, here we go. <clears throat> yeah, it, no such luck. The drive has to uh, the drive has to um, warm up a little bit before it will work. So, definitely needs a hard drive. Yeah, much is known. How does the battery work? It doesn't. Battery's toast. Good. All right. Well, that, uh, that pretty much answers my questions. So I'm I'm gonna have to look for a new hard drive. I I think I have one uh, somewhere. This has to be a smaller drive. It, can't be anything enormous. So I'm looking at something under a couple hundred megs, which is going to be hard. But. Let's try again. Yeah. Hmm. Oh well. It took about six tries, but I got it going. Here we go. And it fires right up. So I'm trying to think of what might be causing this. Um, either a cold solder joint on the drive's controller, perhaps. Possibly faulty heads. It's hard to say. If I had another Go Drive IDE 80 meg drive, I could probably uh, swap some parts out and see if the other drive I've got is um, it just it's, it's a 
it's considerably thicker than what that's in here, so I don't think that's going to work for me. But it's amazing, once you get the drive going, it pff, fires right up. Boom, done. Shame. Okay, I just went through my collection of notebook drives, and this is what I've got. I've got a Travel Star. It is a 40 meg, a uh, gig, 40 gig. What is this thing? No, I think this is actually a, it's probably a 40 gig. I do not remember how to decode these on these ones. I think it's, um, no, that could be a 60. I think it's a 60. I've got, <coughs> excuse me. I've got a Hitachi 30 gig here, IDE. I've got another Travel Star. This is a 40 gig IDE. I've got a Connor 40 megabyte SCSI. I've got a Quantum Go Drive GRS. Now this is a 160 meg SCSI. I believe this one's actually good. And this is the only one that'll work if it if there is any that will. This is a 500 meg. Um, yeah, it looks like an ATA. And that, my friends, is going to be the one that we try. Now let's compare the connectors here. Um, on the ATA, because Apple started using IDE drives later in their uh, career. Um, I'm starting to wonder. Here's a real ATA. Yeah, and then you compare that with the SCSI. The SCSI, the, the, the small SCSI connectors that Apple used to use are actually smaller. <laughs> or than, uh, no, they're about a little bit wider maybe. But, <coughs> than a, uh, an IDE connector. Anyway. I'm like, wait a minute, those pinouts on this one look a little bit like the Quantum. But they're not. They're not, they're not, it's not a SCSI drive. They stopped using SCSI. I think uh, around the 190 series, it was too expensive. So, all right, we're gonna put this in. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna yank out the old quantum. Carefully. These old cables can sometimes be extremely fragile, which is why it's important to be gentle. Um, there you go. Look at that. So I looked up the specs on this drive, and uh, it was made by IBM for Apple. During Apple's Dark Ages period. I call it the Dark Ages because they were losing market share. Nothing they were creating was innovative. And um, the company had lost both of its founding fathers. This is uh, These are in the days before Steve Jobs came back. Woz was pretty much just a stakeholder. And the company was going down the tubes. So they were starting to use clone parts, or just IBM type parts on their machines. And uh, nothing coming out of their factories was really anything to write home about. It's a sad, uh, sad truth. Apple almost died. <clears throat> if it wasn't for Steve Jobs coming back, they would have gone away. Unfortunately, I think they've taken a path in the wrong direction since in recent years, but, yeah. A large GB. There's the old one. I had to replace one of the screws because when they actually assembled the unit, they cross-threaded it. <laughs> it's all fun and games in Taiwan. Yeah.
It'll catch up to you guys. Anyway, here's, by the way, this is where the memory expansion would go, if it had one. Um, they didn't use DIMMs or SIMs or SIPs or anything like that. They used little modules that would plug in. And uh, once they stopped supporting that laptop, you could no longer upgrade the memory. It's actually going back in that direction, I'm finding. Um, it's interesting how the computer industry has started to revert to where it came from. Really, if you think about it, it's more true now than ever. Uh, Apple is coming out with machines that can't be upgraded or replaced, or, I'm sorry, or repaired or anything like that. Well, if you remember correctly, way back in the uh, early 1980s, when they, in the, the mid-1980s, when they released the Macintosh, it was a sealed box. You couldn't operate it. You couldn't add to it. It was exact. Whatever you bought, the day you brought it home, is what you were left with. You couldn't do anything with it. Well, that's true now, and it was true then. So, <clears throat> they're moving back in that direction, which is sad. Really sad for people like me who make a living repairing this junk. But you know, I'll just have to find another career. Thank you, Apple. All right, here we go. And drive spins up. Let's see if it can detect the drive. It won't. I have to set the parameters in the BIOS. Don't forget about that. You'll notice that the date and time is still accurate. That's good news. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put in our drive parameters. Let's see, 1,050 cylinders. We have 16 heads. Sectors per track, 63. Good. Nice. I was afraid that it might not support a drive that big. That was a real problem back in those days. So let's go ahead and exit. And if all is well, we'll get a warning saying the drive is either not bootable or whatever. Let's see what happens. I think I'm going to put a DOS disk in there and try to format it. Still no luck. Um, I'm going to have to try another drive, maybe. I don't know. I'm starting to think that maybe the issue is actually with the drive controller, which could probably be bad capacitors on the motherboard. As some of you may know, um, capacitors can go bad even if they're not being used. So if this thing had been left in the original box, it may still have this problem. Yeah. Well, well I'll have to look at it again and see what's going on.